Your effects. Huh. Was like this. So that's uh, so that kind of thing. But we are taking Gaussian. Gaussian noise and so on. So what should I start? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Then here, right? Yeah. I can see, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, last time I mean uh, we looked at the Neyman Pearson criterion and the Neyman Pearson lemma, which gave you the the region, okay, the region R was defined, uh, it gave you a prescription to find the region R on which you can integrate both the false alarm and the detection probabilities and so on. And from that, for Gaussian noise, to Gaussian noise, we actually got the match filter okay, from that. Okay, so that was the match filter which you applied to the data to get the statistic. So that filter was from Q was there and you apply it to the data vector x, okay, the n-dimensional vector, so all n-dimensional data is there and you get the statistic row okay, from this thing. So you apply q to the and this turned out, this was the match filter. It was given by order uh, ui was mu i k s k. This, uh, remember that this repeated indices is the summation or k. This is the summation or k. This is actually k going from 0 to n minus 1. Okay. I mean, really it is this. But I am not writing the summations. Whenever there is a repeated index, it means there is a summation. Okay. So I won't write. This is called a Einstein summation convention. Okay. So this is the thing which I am using. As you do in GR also. So we got this batch filter like this through the Neyman Pearson criterion and for Gaussian noise. Now you can uh, actually the batch filter is defined in a much wider context. It is not just defined for Gaussian noise and so on. So uh, so I'll do that now. So we will leave this uh, assumption of Gaussianity. Okay, so not Gaussianity, but uh, it is defined in a very general context. Even when the noise is non-stationary. Okay. So this is the definition of the of the match filter, and what does it optimize now? Opt the Neyman-Pearson criterion doesn't come in. It is optimal in another sense. It maximizes what is called the signal-to-noise ratio among all linear filters. Okay, so that is the another optimal uh, optimal property of the match filter. That it optimizes what is called the signal-to-noise. I'll define all those things. What do you mean by signal to noise ratio and so on? Okay. So, <coughs> so what I'm going to do is, so this we got through this Neyman Pearson criterion and so on. Neyman Pearson criterion. And it maximizes what? The detection probability. For a given false alarm, so that was the optimal property of the match filter. So that was uh, that was in Gaussian noise. You get this match filter, but you can relax Gaussian noise. You can relax also the thing of stationarity. So in general, a match filter. A match filter. Is defined as a solution of the integral equation. Integral equation K T prime. So K was that autocorrelation function, okay, which I defined earlier. So K T T prime was what? That it was N T N T prime was this K T T prime, the autocorrelation function. So K T T prime 
क्यूटी uh, प्राइम क्यूटी प्राइम इक्वल टू द एक्सपेक्टेड सिग्नल तो दैट इज दैट इज इक्वल टू द एक्सपेक्टेड सिग्नल द टॉय इज एस ऑफ टी ओके सो के डी टी प्राइम इज गिवन टू यू इट कम्स फ्रॉम द नॉइज ओके फ्रॉम द थिंग एंड दिस इज नीड नॉट बी स्टेशनरी आल्सो इट इज के टी टी प्राइम वी आर वी आर टेकिंग स्टेशनरी नॉइज एंड सो ऑन बट यू डोंट डोंट नीड टू हैव स्टेशनरी नॉइज इट इज के डी टी प्राइम क्यू टी प्राइम डी टी प्राइम सो इट इज द इंटीग्रल इक्वेशन This is called an integral equation. So, if you discretize it, it will be a matrix equation. So, suppose I uh, take samples again here, T i and T k and so on. Okay. So, it would be a thing like this: k, T i, T k, Q k. Okay. This would be the thing. So, this would be a matrix. So, this I call the covariance matrix. Okay. So, I would write this equation as C i k. because mu is the inverse of c okay that's how we had determined so this is in fact what is the batch filter we have we are not assumed anything not even gaussian or something so how does so why why is this why is this such a thing good even in other kinds of noise okay it maximizes what is called the snr okay so snr is the signal to noise ratio okay so i will uh, define the snr and all that now in this thing so but i will look at stationary noise only i will not do the general thing okay so here uh, so what i do is in fourier space so i go to fourier space so if i go to fourier space what you have is uh before going to fourier space so stationarity stationary noise okay. okay take this thing the assumption then this becomes k of t minus t prime okay so this is this equation is k of t minus t prime q t prime d t prime equal to st okay but in the fourier space this is a this is a convolution as you can see okay this is a convolution here so this the integral of this is just so in fourier space You Fourier transform this whole equation. Okay, what you will get is s of f. This goes to s of f, this k of t, and then this goes to q of f. Okay, is equal to small s of f, and uh, we get the same uh, expression s of f over s of f. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is from now on I'm going to right s as h that is our gravitational wave signal because the small s and big s there might be a confusion in the writing okay so <laughs> uh, so which is a big thing and which is a thing so this is the thing which i am going to write so what so what is snr so first thing is definition of snr snr means signal to noise ratio the short for writing signal to noise ratio So we have data x t okay, equal to h of t plus n t. So now I will write h instead of s. Okay, s I will reserve for something else, which is the what is called the template. Okay, and that will be going to that is going to be normalized. Okay, so h I will write as a times s or something like that, where a is the amplitude. So now apply the so what. If you go to the Fourier space, you have x f equal to h of n plus n of n. Okay, so this is the Fourier space thing. Now I apply the filter Q to this thing okay, to get a correlation. So that is that row or something. And I'll write it as C. The correlation okay. is Q star of n 
h f x f b a. So, this is the what you have done is you applied the linear filter, it is a linear operation on this thing because if I add x and y, you know, it will be just the addition of the, this thing and so on. So, this is a linear filter, okay. so this is called a linear filter which you are using here. So, now I want to calculate signal to noise ratio. So, what do you mean by signal to noise? I take the mean, so this is called the statistic, the C is called the statistic. C is a statistic. It is a random variable, okay. Again, it is a random variable because n is a random variable. n has come in the xf, xf is hf plus this, okay. So, first thing I calculate is the mean of C, okay. The mean is mu, say, is the expectation value of C. So, this is q star of f, x of f is h of f plus n of f dA, okay. And I take the average value of this. I take two steps and average value of this. Now, uh, because it is a linear thing here, so I will write this as average value of q star of f times h of f dA. So, I just do this. Average is this is there is no, this is not a random variable at all. This H of f is a given signal, this is a, these are just functions. So, average value is equal to itself, there is no distribution. Yeah. But here there is a distribution. So, here you have q star of f n of f df. Average. average is equal to itself, so it does not matter. So, now if I take this thing. This average moves inside because Q is uh, there, so it just becomes this. Okay. But this is zero, okay. so we have taken this to be zero. So it is just this. So this is the mean of the thing. Okay, so mean or the expected value this statistic. So, we have taken the data, calculated the statistic, so which is also a random variable. Okay. And now, you are taking the mean of this, the first moment okay, of this random variable. And it is this, mu is this. Okay. Now, what you want to calculate is also now sigma. So mu or sigma will be called the signal to noise ratio, that is how it is defined. So, the mean over the standard deviation. So, standard deviation is defined as Taking the so sigma square, this is the variance okay, of the thing. It is integral q f q star of f. This okay and n of f because there is no signal in this thing. So, when you are taking this, uh, you throw out the signal, you just take the noise. Okay. So, this is the variance of the noise. And here also you get q of f, what is this? q of f prime. Okay, let me take the f prime. Yeah, so one of them I will take is, uh, yeah, okay. Q of f prime, n of f prime. So, uh, Q of f prime, yeah. Q star? Yeah, so Q star is there, but I will take the star like this, okay. I will just change the things. It does not matter, sigma square is a real, so it is a, so I can always take this red of okay. And so then this becomes q star of f, q of f prime, and you have this n of f and star of f prime. 
df df prime the double integral so this average i have taken inside q's are known to you and you take the average of this uh, so we have minus mu square also no but mu is zero uh, the we are taking the noise i have only taken the noise not x okay uh, so that that will be there actually so uh, i have taken only the noise because uh, this is zero for the noise so then this is equal to integral df df prime q star of f q of f prime and this is s of f the noise into delta f minus f prime that's how we are defined so what what do you get from this so you get the delta f1 and f prime takes away one integral so you get mod of df mod of q of square so f is equal to f prime and s of f so this is the variance okay. this is the variance of the data actually so i mean i have cut down a step here yeah why well, should i have taken actually x of f and all that and done this thing but i have uh, uh, done a shortcut okay so here so uh, i have just taken the noise but finally it will come out to be this and the snr is defined as mu over sigma so this is the signal over the noise okay so now this is standard deviation of this so this is just uh, what is that signal was there u star f h f d f divided by this whole thing this is zero d f mod u x square s of f d f this is the half so this is the expression for the signal to noise ratio so now the claim is that this signal to noise ratio is maximized for the match filter okay among all linear filters so if you take all linear filters then q is the best among them okay so that is the claim so we can prove this okay and we prove this via the schwarz cauchy inequality okay. so we can use the schwarz cauchy inequality to prove this i mean there are many other ways of proving it also so you could call this also the snr is denoted by rho as we did here so you can call it rho and this is a function of it's a number okay and it depends on q what filter you apply okay and q is a function okay so this is called a this is a mapping from the space of functions to real numbers okay so it is from the space hilbert space d okay So rho maps from D to R. Okay. So rho is a so Q goes to this whole thing. Okay. That is the thing. So it goes to this uh, rho, rho of Q. So it is called a function. R. And now we use the we know that D is a Hilbert space. and now we use the cauchy schwarz inequality okay on this thing and this is a hilbert space with precisely this kind of a scalar product okay we had a scalar product defined okay and uh, we can use uh, the scalar product use the schwarz inequality on the scalar product so that that's what we are going to do now so one thing here to just to make the calculation simple is that you can see that the snr is again uh, does not change with if you change the amplitude of q okay so if i multiply q by some a okay a will be multiplied here as well as because this is the square root of the mod square a will come down here also okay so a will cancel so q going to 
A Q. Does not makes the uh, the SNR remains invalid. The SNR remains invalid. Even if you make a change, which is a you know, so scaling the thing doesn't matter. It doesn't do anything. It will scale the same way. Mu will become a mu. Sigma will become a sigma. That's all. So a a will cancel from this whole thing. So S N R event. So what you do is you choose this a. So use it. So choose a such that that the denominator is one. Okay. So this. So of FDF is one. So variance is one. So SNR becomes simple. So this is just to uh, reduce calculations. Okay. Nothing more than that. It's a trick for that. So rho q now becomes just uh, rho q is just now q star f HF DF. So that is uh, that is all you have here. Okay. And now you use the Schwarz inequality on this. So now what you do is you do this Q star. Huh? No, not A. You have chosen A already, so that this is one. So A is some fixed quantity. So now take the modulus of this. This is what we are doing, going to use use Schwarz inequality on this. Divide by this. This is less than this. Uh, so write this as Q of A. Insert the S of F here between square root and square root of S of F, the noise okay. in this thing. Okay. So, this is the modulus of this. Okay. And so, to come on these two vectors as x and y. Okay. So, the thing. so, this is less than or equal to the mod x square and mod y square. So, this becomes integral mod. Qf square SFD. This is the norm of this vector. So look upon this as one vector and this as another vector. So this may be x and this may be y. So this is less than the norm of this. So this is less than this. Uh, to the half. This to the half. Times integral of h of l mod of this thing h of l. Okay. So this is the thing. The half. So we are using the Schwarz inequality okay. from here by inserting this thing on this. But this is one. Okay. By all this thing. So this is just equal to integral of mod h of x square h of x to the half. So this is the Schwarz inequality. So when do you get equality? When the two vectors are equal in the Schwarz thing. I mean or equal means they are in the same direction. So y should be proportional to x. So the filter is given by just this. Two vectors are x and y. X. So choose this thing x to be in the direction of y. So x equal to some 
A Y if you like. A can be chosen to be one. I mean, it doesn't matter because it's a. Uh, I mean, it's linearly. If you, if you scale it, nothing happens. So Q F. So. So what is that? Equality is achieved when the two vectors are parallel to each other. So that is what happens in cauchy schwarz inequality. So QF root SF will be the same as HF over root SF. Root SF. So that is this. This should be equal to this. Then you get equality. So QF is HF over S of M. So this gives you the match filter. So the best value for the filter is this, which maximizes the SNR. So this is what you have proved. So if you take any filter, so we started with any filter Q. And any linear filter Q, the best filter you get when the best SNR, the maximum SNR you get when this is equal to this. Okay. So this is a <coughs> this is true for all linear filters because all we are only considered linear filters here, and no question of Gaussian noise. We are not considered Gaussian noise or anything, and this holds true not only here, it holds true also when this noise is non-stationary. Okay. I have not done that here. I assume uh, stationarity for easy to do this here, but uh, even if you go to non-stationarity, okay, when you have you can't take Fourier transforms, okay, like this, you can't go to the Fourier space and do this kind of thing. It doesn't help. But still, I think the same thing goes through. Okay. And uh, the match filter then maximizes the signal to noise ratio. So that is the. So that's the. <coughs> The Neyman Pearson that was a different optimal criterion, but this is optimal in other sense where the SNR is maximized. So it is good to use this match filter even if your noise is not Gaussian, it doesn't matter. And also if it is non stationary, but then uh, it is not such a simple thing. You can't go to the Fourier space and get a good expression like this HF or S of F. So there is, there is no such thing as a PSD then in that case. We still have the K, okay, but uh, it can be anything. I mean, then uh, there is no simplification. It's not a function of one variable. <coughs> so that's the thing. Okay. So now, so much for the match filter. So now <coughs> we come to the other thing of composite. So we go back again to the name and Pearson criterion and maximum likelihood method. So now, what I'm going to talk about is the composite hypothesis, okay. Hypothesis and maximum likelihood. MLD maximum likelihood detection. Okay. So, what we, what happens is that we don't have one signal. We don't know what the signal is. Normally, what happens is that in say in spiraling binary or whatever, if you take huh, a T is there. Okay, so we can huh, we can yeah okay yeah. So the batch filter is done. So we can break it here. <laughs> 
So I'm going to a different uh, topic anyway. Okay. So it is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because I want to talk about this ambiguity function and all that stuff. <laughs>